a lot freer than it was. He was here in 1802, 6th of November, and we're here in 2021 on the, I don't even know what month it is. We have left the Penny Father, I think it's called the Penny Father River, yep. and we are heading south to Weeper. Yesterday, while I was pulling the mane in, I thought it was really, really difficult. I didn't, didn't know if I was getting weak or it was. Uh, it wasn't that very easy. So I spun the winch and it spins beautifully. And then I tried to move the winch, and it is so hard to move around that there's something wrong in there. So even though the the drum spins beautifully in there whoops in there there is something wrong so I got the tools out and a bit of aguararis which is Mexican for um, mineral terps and I'll whip it apart and give it a good clean out inside the drum all looks good as gold the main main roller bearing looks good, pulls and springs look good, yeah it's nicely greased and everything but absolutely impossible to turn this by hand or to turn these bearings by hand so something inside here is jammed up. Unfortunately on these Barriot, Barron, Barron 18 winches you can't service them without removing the actual winch. So it's going to be the next job. From memory, this is the only winch I didn't service when we first got the boat. And because I saw these screws and I tried to undo one and they were just jammed, so I gave up. Now I've managed to get them all out, but of course, like any boat job, it was always the one that didn't want to come. So the other five took me, or four, one, two, three, four. Yeah, the other four took me uh, maybe a minute each. This one here took me three quarters of an hour. And I hate slotted screws, so I had to, I had to even grind up a screwdriver to fit perfectly. And they're all as dry as a chip. I mean, check out the thread on these puppies, right? Oh, hang on, they're in a fair way. I suppose they're holding a fair bit of load and torque and everything else when you're cranking the winch on or ripping the main in. But look at these screws, will you? They, I don't know if you can see there. And I'll z no, there we go. That is as dry as a chip. So there's been nothing put on that when they've been screwed back in, anti seize or anything. So when I put it back together, we'll get a liberal coating. So the next poor person who has to take this winch apart, it'll be easy for them. And if I was at home, I would have replaced these with Allen head instead of slotted heads. Makes the job a lot easier. Here we have all the parts, all disassembled, cleaned. And there was one little piece that was causing all the problems. Guess which little piece it was? It was that one. This piece here, whoop, this piece here um, is the pin that this gear sits on. Now that should be a nice smooth fit in there, but it isn't. As you can see, 
Um, some of you will know what this discoloration is called, but yeah, it makes it so that the pin won't fit inside that brass. So what I'm going to do is shiny that up so that, it, that now this gear will spin on the pin. And the pin fits in here into this bit here. That's an interference fit, so that's nice and tight, which is good. But it should be. It's hard doing this one-handed. Should be nice and loose, or not loose, but it should be really schmick fit in there. So we get some emery out. I'll clean this up. We'll see how we go. Eh? That's as far as the pin goes in easily by hand. So let's see with a bit of emery how far we go in. All right. So the pin's like new now. It's just polished up with a bit of emery and if we put it in here it should just fall straight in which it did so now that is a perfect fit for that bear for the bush or bearing well, it's, a, it's not really bearing really it's just a, a bush fit so there we go time to put it all back together again so I'm, I don't have any um, winter grease with me which is slightly stickier grease um, all I've got with me is just standard old high performance marine grease. It's not the best thing for this, but uh, it's all I've got. So, grease it all up, put it all back together. The only thing you don't grease on these are, um, on winches are the pull pockets. So these little pockets here, um, where your pulls and springs go, you don't grease. So here, these pulls, pull pockets, these, oh, for those of you who don't know what pulls are, they're, that's a pull there, right? And that's a pull spring. I'll show you what they do in a minute and then uh, you'll understand what I'm talking about. But they don't get greased, they just get machine oil. Or I use WD-40, of course. So for those of you that have never disassembled a ratchet, a ratchet's simply a bearing that... Um, uh, sorry, a gear that will spin one way and not the other. What you've got in here are the poles, poles and springs. That's your pole and the spring sits, you can just see a little bit of the spring in the bottom there. So that allows um, the gear to spin one direction, which is that way, but not back again. So we just use a little bit of machine oil on these poles down in the pole pocket and uh, the rest gets greased up. So we've got one here for one direction because it's a two speed winch and then the other for the other direction the poles and springs are in the top here. So there we go. That's what a pole does. It's a lot freer than it was. And you should be able, when you, to check a two-speed winch to make sure that it's not gummed up inside. A little trick is turn it one way. And you can hear two poles going. You hear click, 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 then every, about every, depends on the, the speed of the winch, about every third or fourth click you'll hear a second pole. So listen. So click, 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 and then the second click. So you should hear that plain as day. If you can't really hear the difference, then she's all gummed up. But that, that is as sweet as sweet now. at the Penafarthing River and it sort of says generally that it's for boats that don't have much draft but uh, Magnus has just gone in we've sent the jolly boat 
to go and check the uh, depth so we can take the big boat in. It's like Captain Cook did. So there's Magnus over there. He's just going to go and uh, check the depths, see if there's any chance of us getting over the bar. So if that's the case, we will be staying here for the night, which isn't too bad. It's not as rolly as some of the other anchorages we've had. It's a beautiful little place. It's got um, camping on the beach by the looks of it. Lots of four-wheel drives there and a very pretty river, lots of sand, sandy shore. So we'll stay here a day or so and then we'll head south to Weepa. See ya. Looks like he's going over there to see if there's another way in. Things are still out there poking around. So I'm guessing he might have found a way in or he would have been back by now. I will keep you posted as to whether we get in and it will be a lovely anchorage if we do because it will be nice and calm. Well, most of the river anchorages are calm and it'd be nice to spend a day there and to poke around in Peanut. See ya. There he is over there, that little speck. Looks like he's on his way back. We draw 1.8, so it'll give us 0.6 under the keel. But it's only about two metres wide the channel in, and if you make one little mistake, you're up on the on the sandbar. And the wind's blowing. It's only blowing 26 knots now, but it was over 30. And it's wind on tide, some steep waves in there. So I'm calling it. We're going to have a beer here. Uh, yeah, and it's windier and choppier in there than it is here because we're tucked in behind this little K. Um, there's a little sand cave here and we're tucked in behind it. So even though it's blowing 30 knots, the waves are six inches big. Um, so it's pretty comfortable. There's no swell coming in from the southwest like normal. So we're going to just, I'll put the snubber on and we'll stay here, I think. What do you reckon, Wendt? Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, have a nice dinner. Of tuna. Oh yeah, that bluefin tuna we caught. We just pan fried it, or Wendy pan fried it last night, just dry fried. Delicious. So what are you doing tonight with it? Uh, I'm going to do panko and I'm going to do some rice and a nice salad because we actually do have salad on board nice. which is not very common right now. No. So, um, sounds good. This tune is really nice. Yeah. Anyway, catch you later. See ya. After um, that little survey I thought I'll come and see what Flinders reckoned. So I haven't got up to this chapter yet. This is my Flinders um, Voyage to Terra Australis Volume 2 by Matthew Flinders. And on the, when was it here? Uh, on the 6th of November, 1802, um, after having, uh, he says here, um, on the Northern Bank, about the Aboriginals, he said these people were all naked and in colour, as in everything else seemed to have a perfect resemblance to the inhabitants of the east and south coast of Terra Australis. In Torres Strait, bows and arrows are the offensive weapons, but here we saw spears only. Each man had several in his hand and something which was supposed to be a throwing stick. So they're just learning and interacting. Flinders was really good um, with the first Australians. He, he well, as far as it was written anyway, he interacted with them quite well. For example, up the coast here a little bit, we passed this place called Flinders Camp, and I read on the 5th of November that as an offering, because they, they were scared to to go and see him, of course, um, so as an offering, he left a hatchet in a tree, um, which they they soon, uh, soon grabbed. But anyway, um, he anchored just here, 
and it says this small opening, which is the opening here, uh, appears to be the Cohen River of the Dutch chart, because the Dutch had been here already, remember? They were here um, 200 years before Flinders. In fact, tomorrow we're going to go past Dyfkin Point, which is the first place that was charted and, um, and set foot on by Europeans here in Australia. They were the Dutch on a boat called the Dyfkin, which in Dutch means little dove. But anyway, I'm digressing. Um, the small opening appears to be the Cohen River of the Dutch chart, but the entrance is too small and shallow to admit anything larger than boats. Boats meaning small rowboats and, and small sailing boats. It's latitude, longitude, blah, 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 variation, blah, blah, blah. The tide was coming from the southwest, which uh, it's doing now, at 10 in the morning, and on entering the end it was found to be setting in a considerable strength, and it was quite strong in there, I was going a bit sideways. Um, and he talks about the tide and he talks about uh, the time between Prince Wales Island tide and the tide here because you've got to remember he was the first guy to come down here and and survey and it, he didn't know the, what the tides were doing and 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 he so he was plotting and, and logging everything as he was going an incredible guy uh, I've said it before and I'll say it again before the um, end of this trip but, uh, yeah so he and his description here of the coast after he went through um, Endeavour Passage and started coming down down the gulf here his description of everything as he well, starts here his description of everything as he writes is exactly as we've seen it in the last three days um, so he's pretty good and I've been checking his coordinates his lats and longs and bearings to what we're what we've got with our GPS's and he's pretty accurate like he's very accurate and as we go and he, he always gives bearings to all the different islands and things and his bearings are spot on he's um, incredible but anyway so he was here uh, he was here in 1802 6 of November and we're here in 2021 on the, I don't even know what month it is, what month are we in wet? August. What day? I don't know. We don't tenth know what. 10th-ish. 10th-ish, 10th-ish of August. So, um, he was, we're here in the dry season, it's right in the middle of the dry season. He's here in the beginning of the wet, so he's starting to get a big weather change. Kettle's cooking, so I better have a cup of tea. See ya. Dinner tonight we have homemade pale ale with yeah sim with Simcoe, Simcoe with Simcoe, Simcoe hops. hops. We have pan fried um, tuna, tuna, long tail tuna or bluefin tuna. We have a little salad. We have some rice. And we have tartare sauce. And in here we have lime. There we go. Buon appetito. Not, not a bad uh, spread for in the middle of the bush. We haven't had a sunset over the ocean for ages. And this one's going to be a ripper. I reckon we might get a green flash tonight. Stay tuned. Righto, let's see if we get it. This might be 30 seconds of boredom but we might just capture one. And... No, no green flash. Oh well, try tomorrow night. Good night guys, see ya. It's the 9th of August 2021 and I remember in our early videos we never put the year so it's nice to have the year so you can look back on this video diary that we're making 
Anyway, we have left the Penny Father, I think it's called the Penny Father River, yep. and we are heading south to Weeper. It's a bit of a day sail and we expect to get there hopefully before dark. Where we actually end up will depend on the wind. So we may tuck into a little creek sort of before we actually get to Weeper because Weeper's quite far in from the coast. If not, we will make our way to Weeper. So that's where we're going today. And as you'll see, or as you have already seen, what a beautiful sunrise. See ya. You got any slide? I'm just taking photos um, of beautiful photos of the sunrise with a fishing line and fishing reel in them. Um, just to send to my mates that are at work today um, that should be out here fishing with me. But they choose to increase their wealth financially. We're increasing our wealth emotionally. How's that for D and M first thing in the morning? But anyway, so I'm just I love taking photos and sending them to people like Roger and Eric and all those people that um, can't catch fish. See you guys. It's coming into Weeper now. to that little, uh, little speech earlier, um, I was just thinking, we have lots of Rogers, so Roger B, I've still got the 50 bucks pinned to our notice board, so I'm only going to buy our Sevilla when it's really good place, so um, that's still coming, so it's not right you Roger B, and Roger F, um, who's taken me to my favourite pub in Australia, it's not you, and Roger V, a uh, good old mate who I ride motorcycles with all over the world. It's not you. Um, Roger S, it's you. See you, mate.